Make a wish. <coughs> it's my 14th birthday today and I've been thoroughly spoiled. I've had a book on mythology, a pot of yogurt, a brooch made out of a penny. As youngest amongst us, but and no more. your life can be trying, for we have the chore of becoming your teachers. <laughs> you read and you study all the day, determined to keep the boredom away. The more difficult question, much harder to bear, is what on earth do I have to wear? <laughs> I've got no more knickers, my clothes are too tight, my vest is a loincloth, I'm really a sight. To put on my shoes, I must cut off. Yeah, I'm plagued with so many woes. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. And, man, what goes 99 thump? I don't know what. A centipede with a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Sorry, I haven't got any wrapping paper. They're my nieces. She's outgrown them. Thank you, mate. Oh, look at her. Sweet 14 and never been kissed. It's 16, stupid. Well, it wasn't for me. <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm on stilts. But I'll practice and practice until I get used to them. What's happening to me is so wonderful. And I don't just mean the changes on the outside of my body, but the inside, too. Anna. Whenever I have my period, I've had it three times now, I feel that despite all the pain and mess, I'm carrying around a sweet secret. Sometimes, at night, I have a terrible urge to, to touch my body. I can't tell anyone. Not even Margot. about sex, aren't they? And Margot won't tell me anything. She was back? Good. It was Jacqueline who told me that babies don't come out of their mother's tummies. Anna, darling? She said, where the ingredients go in, that's where the finished product comes out. <laughs> Once, I, I tried to feel her breasts, but she wouldn't let me. Anna, look how you've grown. That's three inches in this last year. We can't wear these skirts, Mother. It was very kind of Beth. They're hideous. They're not that bad. Like potato sack. She used up all her clothing coupons. Everything's wearing out. Mother's corset snapped. Things get broken and we can't replace them. And the Van Dan's money is running out. Give that back. You're not selling it. Give that back! Over my dead body! Why can't the firm pay for our 
Plus, it pays for the francs. This business, you stupid cow. Give me that coat! What about his bicycle? No, Mother! What, what use is it to you here? I need it. Oh, yes, where exactly are you planning to go? When the war is over, it's then It's never I... going to be over! We're going to be shot like rats by the Nazis! We're going to be blown to bits while we're locked up here like lepers! Shut up! Why didn't you get us out of here before it was too late? We, we could have gone to America! Shut up! <gasps> What are you grinning at? I'm not. Staring at us. Sniggering at us. I'm not. Why can't you stay in your own bloody room? She's just a fat, red-faced fishwife. Added to that, she's exceedingly pushy, egotistical, yes. cunning, calculating, manipulative, grasping, vain, and coquettish. Oh, if only I could dump her in a bucket of water and put her in the coal shed. Aren't parents awful? Don't you mind it when they're horrible to you? I probably deserve it. No, you don't. You should stand up to them. And they've always been like this. You're too nice. That's your problem. I hadn't realised that until recently. I'm sorry I teased you. It's all right. When I called you a dimwit, you're not. You just take your time. I think that underneath it, you're a really deep thinker. The trouble is, I babble away, and then I could hit myself afterwards. Nobody really understands me, but then I don't really understand myself. I feel so lonely sometimes. You? Haven't you noticed? Most of these potatoes... My parents are just as bad. Treat me like a baby. Even father does, and I love him to bits. And he's always siding with Margot. Everybody loves Margot. Well, of course, I do, too. She's so beautiful, isn't she? Don't you think? I hadn't really thought about it. Is that true? Next time you go to get the potatoes, can I come, too? Down to the warehouse? Won't you be scared? with you. I need a bra now. I don't think so. Can I have one of yours? I've only got two. But you said they've got too small. Yeah, but I haven't got anything else. Please. OK. Really? You like Peter, don't you? Hmm. Of course. How much do you like him? More than you do, that's for sure. Well, she wouldn't snap at her hand. And he's not very bright. But he does have feelings. For months now, I haven't been allowed down here. Father says it's got too dangerous. It feels so strange to be this close to the outside world. 
You're so brave coming down here. It's my job. And I have to bolt the doors each night and unbolt them again every morning. Sometimes, when it's quiet, I can hear the warehouse men laughing. Huh. They used to be my friends. They used to give me sweets. He always follows me down. He loves you, that's why. Peter and I have been coming to the attic more and more lately. I think I'm falling in love with him, but I don't know if he feels the same way about me. He's so shy. I think they're playing just for us, don't you? Sometimes I feel like a bird whose wings have been ripped off. I want to dance and whistle. I want to look at the world and feel young and free and not worry whether or not I'm Jewish. I just want to have some fun. Like everyone's always getting at me. If I, I talk, I'm showing off. If I don't talk, I'm rude. And if I'm tired, I'm lazy. Growing up, so always like that. We're going to be different, aren't we? I want to move to the East Indies and live on a rubber plantation. I'm going to be a dancer or a famous movie star. I can't decide which. It's all right. I've got a chaperone. Have you two got my cushion? I'm sorry, Mr. Dussel. It was the only one we could find. It'll be covered in fleas. The cat didn't sit on it. Can I have nothing to myself in this place? What a fuss pot. Let's give him a real surprise. What? Too laughing about. Anne? I'm doing my best not to chase after him all the time and to talk to him as little as possible, but it's not easy. door was still bolted this morning. I had to break a window to get in. You stupid idiot. Now the air raid warden will think there's been a burglary and call the police. The police? Shh. You're getting very careless nowadays. One little job and you can't even bloody do that! Peter. It gets worse and worse. Mushi's disappeared. No one's seen him since yesterday. It's not your fault. I'm useless. I'm stupid. I'm no good at anything. That's not true. You're quite good at geography.
And now I've lost my cat. You've got me. Have you ever kissed anybody? No. No one? Well, only mother I, and... I mean, a girl. mad with desire for him, and yet, I don't know. Is he the right one? I don't know. The attic again. Oh, I'm just letting Peter the Foresight Saga. Getting a lot of reading done up there, are you? The Italian armed forces have surrendered unconditionally and an armistice has been granted. Where's Anna and Peter? They should be hearing this. This news has been given by General Eisenhower in a broadcast from Algiers at half past five this afternoon. Here is the text of this paper. so I'm not Miss Quack Quack anymore. I'm sorry I teased you. <laughs> you thought I was a little pest, didn't you? I used to be the class clown, but I'm a different Anne now. I like it when you smile. Why? Because you've got dimples on your cheeks. <laughs> I was born with them. The only mark of beauty I possess. Well, that's not true. I know I'm not beautiful. I never have been and I never shall be. I think you're very pretty. You're my El Dorado. <laughs> that's a place, silly. You can't call a person that. I'm only joking. My dear. Right, mother. Please be careful, my love. About what? Peter's a very sensitive child. But I'm not. I just mean he's rather young for his age. In many ways, rather younger than you. And he hasn't had your advantages. You know, you know you can be rather demanding. Demanding? Well, enthusiastic. I mean, you pick things up and then you suddenly get bored of them. Is that all you can say, Mother? Can't you be happy for me? Of course I am. I just... 
don't want him to be hurt. You can be rather hurtful, you know. Seems like you care more about his feelings than you do about mine. That's not true. I want you to be happy more than anything in the world. Doesn't sound like it. I just don't want you to grow up too fast. Girls do nowadays, haven't you noticed? We're not going to be the same as you. We're going to live our own lives and travel and have careers and... And we're going to make a better job of it than you grown-ups did. Tell me honestly, do you mind? Of course not. I mean, you're near his age. I've never thought of him like that. I just wish you'd told me. We used to tell each other everything. You could always come and join us up in the attic. What? You'd be very welcome. Don't be silly. My turn. I wish I could get away from our parents. Do you think they've got bases on the coast? Of course, some of them must be. I suppose sometimes they must put petrol in and think it's full. It's they getting cold up here. Side. It's so boring. We've been shut up together so long that everyone knows what everyone else is going to say. It's the punchline of every joke, the end of every story. We're driving each other crazy. That is the stupidest comment I've ever heard of. But why aren't the British carrying out any bombing raids today? Because the weather's bad. Yes, but it was nice yesterday and they weren't flying then either. Oh, shut up! Can't a person talk? Not in your case. Mr. Frank always answers his wife. She doesn't talk such rubbish. I'm only trying to make conversation. And when she does talk, it's usually something pleasant or useful. Me! Every day our helpers arrive, with the wind on their clothes and the fresh air on their cheeks, bringing us our freedom. Uh, come upstairs, we're all waiting for you. On Saturday, Meep's laden like a packed meal with our library books. Food comes in cycles. Just now it's cabbage. Cabbage with sand, cabbage without sand, cabbage with mashed potatoes, cabbage and mashed potato casserole. But I don't mind. All I think about is when I can be alone again with Peter. I know. Do you think it's wrong? No. No, but when you're living so close together as we do, you have to be careful. <sighs> Outside, things are quite different. You can see other girls and boys, and you can take part in sports and other activities, but here, we're together every moment of the day. If you want to get away from someone, you can't. Things can get rather 
out of hand. Time for your French. I've been thinking a lot about marriage lately. Take my parents. Their relationship is supposed to be ideal. No cross words, perfect agreement. But father's not in love with mother the way she's in love with him. He kisses her the way he kisses us. I'm not going to have a marriage like that. Dear Pim, if only you knew how unhappy and lonely I've been this last year and a half, with everybody criticising me for everything I do. Somebody's tried to assassinate Hitler. Come listen to the wireless. In a moment. Nobody, not even you, understands how I'm growing up. I need to be free. And now, after a long struggle, the battle's over. I don't need you or my mother anymore. I don't want to live by your example. I'm an independent person and I'll behave the way I want to. Nothing will keep me from going up to the attic. You'll either have to forbid it or trust me. I'm not your little girl anymore, so please leave me alone. Dinner's ready. What's the matter, dear? No, I'm just, uh, just reading about Pip's death. What again? <laughs> I've received many letters in my lifetime, but none as hurtful as this. You've had so much love from us. We've been always on your side, however impossible you've been. All this time, I've encouraged you to be a writer <laughs> so that you can write me this. I can't help it. I have to write what I feel. 